You may not have noticed, because absolutely no one was talking about it, but the GPU market was royally screwed up until not too long ago. Graphics cards were impossible to find in stock, and if you did find one, it was selling for almost triple what it was worth. This meant that anyone looking to get into PC gaming on a budget was crap out of luck. But then, then, a shining beacon of hope appeared amongst the insanity, AMD's Ryzen 3 2200G and Ryzen 5 2400G. And by rows, I mean we just received one for a review sample and it took a few months, but here it is. This is our video on it. These APUs, they give us the same respectable CPU performance of the already fantastic Ryzen lineup, but also came packed with Vega graphics, making them the APUs with the best integrated graphics ever. This means they're perfect for anyone who doesn't want to spend more on a graphics card than their food bill for the next 10 years. It's the perfect solution. But beyond the phenomenal value and impressive, for an APU at least, gaming performance that they offer, some speculated that they wouldn't be half bad at crypto mining either. And given the sheer amount of comments that I got about mining on that freaking DGX-2 from NVIDIA, the 400,000 supercomputer, you guys just can't let it go. There's nothing that can't be tainted by Will it mine? I mean, after all, with the 2400G, you are getting four cores, eight threads, and a Vega chip with 11 graphics cores running at decent frequencies. You can mine some or other Crypto Knight coin with the CPU while mining another coin with the iGPU. Score, right? Well, that's exactly what we'll be checking out in this video. And by, I mean, we will be checking it out. My team in South Africa received the review sample and they did all of the work and sent me back everything. So this is, I'm recording the video. They did all the hard work. So thanks, Tank. Reese, Rickus, you guys are the legends getting work done while I'm in the States traveling everywhere. Really appreciate you guys. So now when we initially decided to do this video, we didn't think it'd be too big of a deal. We just get the chip set up, run some mining benchmarks and be done with it. GG easy, except for it wasn't GG easy. In fact, it was BG, not easy. That is what the kids are saying nowadays, right? Isn't it? Drink Fortnite, Fortnite, Mobile, PUBG, I don't know, words, linguists. You see, we knew these APUs had a few issues going into this thing. Multiple reviewers had trouble getting the chips to work correctly when they initially came out. But luckily, because we only got into testing our 2400G now, months later, or at least a month later, most of those have since been fixed by AMD and motherboard makers. But just to make doubly sure there wouldn't be any funny business going on with our testing, we followed the steps provided by other reviewers like Gamers Nexus on how to ensure the system is stable before testing. Link in the description and in the card right there. And wanted you know it, the only issue that we initially ran into was not giving the iGPU a display. But after plopping in a discrete card, we could update the BIOS on our MSI B350M mortar, which shout out to MSI for sending this over to us for review. This as well as the 2400G, big thanks to you guys. So we set it, the BIOS to the later version on that motherboard and set the iGPU as default. We then removed the discrete card and everything was smooth sailing. We installed all of the correct most recent display and chipset drivers and even fired up a game or two that ran surprisingly well at low to medium settings at 1080p, just as expected, just as in everybody else's review. Unfortunately, when it came to mining, you know, the, the main thing we were most excited to test, things went from smooth peanut butter to old tarred road with massive potholes during an earthquake while a volcano erupts in the middle of the road. I think I'm just describing the movie on the sci-fi network. What was it called? Volcano? Daniel Lee Jones, wasn't it? Or is that Dante's Peak with uh, Pierce Brosnan? I think they're the same movie. Did those come out at the same time? The point is that getting the 2400G to mine wasn't easy, or at least getting its iGPU mining, it wasn't easy. Getting the CPU part of the APU mining was as simple as with any other CPU. You just download the mining software, tweak your settings, and you're off. We did that, then mildly overclocked the CPU to 3.9 gigahertz, easy on the B350M from MSI, and then we overclocked the G-Skill RAM to 3200 megahertz at without any issue. Again, thanks to MSI for the decent BIOS to actually support that because we've had issues in the past with the Ryzen motherboards. So with all of that done, we decided to test the CPU's mining performance first using the XMR stack miner. And the results, well, nothing to write home about, were close to what we expected with the 2400G CPU cranking out around 170 hashes per second mining Crypto Knight. The reason we didn't expect any more than 200 hashes is because we know that the Crypto Knight algorithm requires two megabytes of L3 cache per mining instance. The 2400G only has four megabytes of L3 cache at its disposal, and as such, mines most optimally on just two of the chip's eight threads, two megabytes per thread. Mining on more than the optimal amount of threads we found actually has a very negative impact on mining performance, so we left it there. If you wanna know more about that, you can check out our CPU mining video right up in that top right hand corner. So at a rate of 170 hashes per second, the CPU portion of the 2400G mines SumoCoin most profitably at 14 cents per day when not taking electricity 
decounts into, into account according to whatdemand.com. Adding an electricity cost of 12 cents per kilowatt hour into the equation actually makes the chip more expensive to run than we'll be bringing in. So not exactly a great start. But the 2400G is more than just a CPU. What about the free GPU that you get along with it? Surely that'll bring the numbers up to much less depressing state. You'll enter profitability and everything will be good. Um, well, not so much. At least not from what we found in our testing. Trying to mine on the Vega part of this Ryzen Vega Fusion ha! chip was one of the most annoying experiences that Tank has encountered in a while and Tank gets annoyed at hardware a lot. We knew going into this that in order to mine with the iGPU at peak profitability, we need to change its dedicated memory size in MSI's board's BIOS to two gigabytes instead of the default 256 megabytes. So that's what we did. And sure enough, the system booted up without a hitch. Unfortunately, that was the last time we avoided any hitches. Running the same XMR stack miner as before, as soon as the GPU was initialized to begin mining, it crashed the entire system and left us with a blue screen. We know other reviewers ran into the same blue screen a few times back when the chip first launched, and they were able to fix it eventually. Well, as we mentioned before, we already applied said fix before even starting our texting, and even with various other methods, we weren't able to keep the miner running without the system blowing up and dying. Out of desperation, we even upped the system's available version virtual memory, which we've done before with mining issues on a few GPUs we tested to some success, but nothing. No matter what we tried, the GPU simply wouldn't mine. Heck, we even tried multiple other Kryptonite enabled miners, including SG Miner and Claymore, and all of them either refused to mine or crashed the system. After that, we decided to give up on Kryptonite mining with the iGPU and moved on to other algorithms. Even though it's basically pointless because the DAG file size is more than double the iGPU's dedicated memory size, we gave mining Ethereum a shot off camera with predictable results, which means it couldn't create the DAG files, so trying to mine it was stupid. Why would you do that tank and why would you put it in the script? We briefly checked out mining other coins with similar stupid results. We did, however, finally get the GPU to mine something. That something being Signatum and Sia coin. But doing so turned out to be pointless too, as the GPU wasn't even really being utilized when mining these coins. For Sia coin, we we're looking at a hash rate of 340 mega hash per second, and for Signatum, it was around 4.6 mega hash per second. With that electricity cost, those low numbers mean the GPU wouldn't even be making one cent per week let alone per day. Now, like I said, it was clear the GPU wasn't even being utilized. So there's more going on here than just the GPU producing low hash rates. And sure enough, Legit Reviews was able to get the iGPU mining Kryptonite. We tried the exact same steps they did and it didn't work for us. And they got it at a rate of 88 hashes per second at stock settings, which it's, it's still quite low. But with the iGPU's lack of real fast dedicated memory, like what we've seen in internal and external GPUs or like the dedicated GPUs, that's to be expected. Now, if we were to add that 88 hashes per second to our earlier CPU only rate of 170 hashes, you get 258 hashes, calculators and such, which still isn't much, but significantly better than with just the CPU's hashing power. Sadly, with the current state of the GPU market, that still means you can only expect to make around 22 cents per day without electricity and a paltry three cents per day with an electricity cost of 12 cents per kilowatt hour, which means that you'd be basically making 90 cents a week or 90 cents a month, not even a dollar a month. That's crazy. At 22 per cents per day, $162.89, 2400G ex is expected to pay itself off in 740 days. Again, that's without electricity costs. So look, even though we weren't able to test the 2400G's mining capabilities as thoroughly as we wanted to, the end result would have been the same if we had. Mining on the 2400G's Ryzen CPU and Vega graphics can be done. We've seen it done to some extent and others have proven it too, but it's really, really not worth it. Even if your chip mined like a champ straight out of the box without hours of troubleshooting, the hash rates and returns just aren't worth the effort, especially with mining profitability dropping more and more every day across the board. The CPU part of the chip just doesn't have enough cash to be able to produce more than 200 hashes per second. And the Vega GPU suffers even more without its dedicated, not defecated, but not really dedicated two gigabyte max maximum memory. And while the iGPU in the 2400G is the best we've seen in any APU before or since, and in gaming is on par with dedicated GPUs like Nvidia's GT 1030, it simply isn't built with mining related workloads in mind. And it shows. You could argue that most GPUs aren't built with mining 
not need mind, but at least in the case of most dedicated GPUs, you're getting faster dedicated memory, making them better suited for the task than the 2400G. But as we've said, the 2400G wasn't built to be a great miner, and it isn't. It's built to give people who want a cheap solution for light gaming, a better option than buying heavily overpriced dedicated card. And it also happens to be a fantastically capable CPU that you can eventually pair with a dedicated GPU once they become more affordable down the road. Detracting from any of that due to the chip's lack of mining prowess would be an absolute travesty. You can go look at anybody else's review. You can go look at some of a tech's world's first review on the 2400G. And you see that it's actually a great gaming chip. It is what you should be buying if you don't want a dedicated graphics card and you have around $200 for a CPU. That is what you should get because it's going to blow the UHD 630 or the HD 630 out of the water from Intel. AMD has really knocked it out of the park with the APU. It it, it just works. It's it's great. The only thing that I, I mean, we're all disappointed with and everybody wants is a Ryzen 7 APU, which would mean that we have eight cores and 16 threads, and then we have the same Vega 11 or maybe even Vega 16 graphics. But the issue with that is that there's not enough space on the actual chip to provide for that because it's using one of the core complexes to use for the graphics and the other core complex is for the actual CPU itself. And there's only two and eight core 16 thread Ryzen's take up both for just the CPU. The only chance that we'll see a better Vega is on something maybe like Threadripper. If AMD wants to decide to put integrated graphics in the tune of a Vega 24 or Vega 30 on, you know, a, a Threadripper 1900X 8 core 16 thread, then we could see some, some really great, like, just combinations of everything. That, that I think that's the best case scenario that we all want. But anyways, I'm gonna wrap this video up there. What do you guys think of mining on the APUs? Are you glad that it didn't work out because that means that you can actually buy these for gaming and that they're not gonna be usurped for mining unless people dis discover some sort of like weird algorithm that somehow utilizes the powers combined and makes it so that they're $500 for a single 2400G. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments or over on our community discord top link in the video description. Come over there and chat with us about that. Smash the like button if you enjoyed it. Get subscribed to stay up to date on all of our tech related content. I'm Brett with the UFD Tech Channel. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all in the next video which is likely going to be a new place. Maybe. Who knows? I'm probably not. No, I'm going to be in DC another day. So you'll see this. Cheers.